These days, Mark Ruffalo seems to be riding high on his blockbuster success, but in reality, the actor has endured overwhelming challenges to get where he is today. From life-threatening health issues to the loss of those closest to him, here's a look at Mark Ruffalo's tragic real-life story. Ruffalo grew up in Wisconsin alongside his brother and two sisters. But according to Men's Journal, when his father Frank's painting business went under, the family moved to Virginia Beach. Then, when a second business tanked, the Ruffalos headed west. Your great-great-grandfather was once the richest man in Boston. So how come we're so poor? In San Diego, Frank was only able to find temporary work, and the family spiraled into bankruptcy. Mark, who had just graduated high school, has recalled in several interviews that the family was living in a neighborhood where drugs like meth were commonly sold. As Ruffalo recalls it, grade school was difficult. He told Parade, I was miserable. This sounds sappy, but I was always aware of the frailty of human beings, the sorrow and the nature of things. I didn't know how to live in the world, how to cope. I felt like I didn't belong. Later in life, Ruffalo discovered he had been suffering from undiagnosed ADHD and dyslexia. In 2017, he teamed up with the Child Mind Institute on their My Younger Self initiative, revealing a bit of his own journey with mental health. There's help and that there are ways to, to deal with it and to manage it and to overcome it. Ruffalo even moved his young family from upstate New York back to New York City so his children could attend a school with a program for dyslexic students, should they need it. While Ruffalo was living in L.A., he had a best friend named Michael. The actor described their common bond, telling Parade, "...he was the only one I knew as sad as me who I could talk to." But in 1994, Michael succumbed to his own depression and took his own life. Ruffalo remembered, "...when he died, it rocked me out of a dark depression. The moment he left, I realized that death wasn't an escape." To Ruffalo, acting became a way of moving forward past the pain of his younger years. Ruffalo has dealt with depression for his entire life, and according to New York Magazine, after high school, as his friends were going to college, Ruffalo said he instead spent most of his time smoking, surfing, and wandering around aimlessly. He worked as a busboy and said he was just about ready to jump off a bridge. Ruffalo now has a name for it, telling The Observer, "...it's dysthymia. It's a long-running, low-grade depression all the time. I've been struggling with that my whole life." The actor credits meditation with changing his outlook, revealing to Rolling Stone, "...it's pretty much a daily practice that quiets your brain and, oddly enough, actually slows down time so you're not so much trapped in your immediate reactions to things. My work started to change, my luck started to change, the way the world looked to me changed." After having a dream that he had a brain tumor, a CAT scan confirmed Ruffalo had developed an acoustic neuroma, a benign tumor in his brain. She said, um... You have, a, you have a mass behind your left ear the size of a, ba uh, of a golf ball. It was a trying time. Yeah, it was very scary. I found out, and then our baby was born two weeks later. Several weeks after the birth of his son Keen, Ruffalo underwent surgery to remove the tumor. But even though the operation was a success, he lost hearing in his left ear, and that side of his face was completely paralyzed. The crisis couldn't have come at a worse time for Ruffalo's career, either. Due to the complications, he retreated to his home where he stayed in self-imposed exile, unable to work. It lasted a long time. It lasted to the point where they were saying, you're probably not going to get your, your face back. After six months of paralysis, Ruffalo beat the odds and was able to make very slight movements, signaling the beginning of his recovery. According to the LA Times, Mark's brother, Scott Ruffalo, died a week after being shot in the head in his own home in 2008. Initially, it appeared that Scott might have died playing Russian roulette, but eventually the case was ruled a homicide. Police questioned Shaha Michelle Adam and her boyfriend Brian Schofield after they willingly came forward. Shaha claimed she visited Scott to pick up some keys, said Scott then mentioned something about Russian roulette, and Shaha says she heard a gunshot shortly after. She was booked, but then released. And in 2012, she suddenly died, leaving the case without a critical witness. Scott's murder remains unsolved. You know, it's, it'll be the great mystery uh, of my life. Following his brother's death, Ruffalo took a break from Hollywood. He told The Telegraph, "...my brother passing away reminded me that life is short and you'd better do what you want while you have a chance." Ruffalo fired his agent and publicist, left his apartment in L.A., and moved to a secluded home in upstate New York with his wife and three children. Still, Ruffalo couldn't completely leave the business and went on to make his directorial debut with 2010's Sympathy for Delicious. Ruffalo remained semi-retired from acting until he read the script for The Kids Are All Right. As he told The Telegraph, he took on the project in memory of his brother. He was this incredibly beautiful, sexy, vibrant, 
uh, fun-loving guy. And it was a way for me to, you know, say thank you to him. The actor has since gone on to enviable success, despite the many devastating challenges he's faced in his life. He looked back on his struggle, telling Life and Style, I was tending bar at Chateau Marmont and I'd see Johnny Depp and Nick Cage hanging around hugely successful while I was barely making a living. I must have auditioned 800 times without landing a part, thanks to the support of his wife and three children, and a whole lot of honest work on his well-being. The guy now widely known as Hulk from The Avengers is living his best life. Just be patient and, and accept the journey that you've been uh, that you've been asked to take. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.